Hey guys, this is George, your favorite registered nurse, travel trotter, fashion fiend, and foodie, and we are here to go over my favorite looks of the night of Oscars 2024. I'm so sad because it's basically the last hurrah. It has been a whirlwind the last few months with Fashion Month, with the Dune press looks, and with award season, but it came to a screeching halt Sunday night, and now it's all over. Um, it's been a time to be alive, guys. If you're new here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is George, and on my channel, we talk about nursing, we talk about fashion, travel, and food. And if you are returning, I'm glad you guys are back, so let's get into it. Okay, first look of the night is Miss Dune herself, Zendaya, looking stunning here. We need to give it up for her and LaRoche, because, like, Dune press looks were freaking phenomenal. Um, tonight, Zendaya looks amazing again. She's in Armani Privé and Bulgari Jewels, obviously, because she's a Bulgari girl. She's a Bulgari ambassador. So I love this dress. It's this rose silk um, single strap. The motif is uh, Palm Springs not palm springs but um palm trees and um i always love pink and gray together it's a great combo um i think she looks great with this gun metal like bodice um of a center her hair is giving old hollywood glam and um it's kind of departure it's kind of a departure from her dude outfits where they were more like futuristic i think she looks fantastic i love the fabric it looks like this translucent gel liquid material um at least that's how it photographs and I noticed that a lot of the Armani Privé looks like Carrie Mulligan's look, um, the Armani Privé 2024 that I did a short on, like it has this like really beautiful like metallic sheen gel like looking fabric and I think it looks so amazing. Um, yeah, so would I say that she's my best dress of the night? No, but she definitely looks great. Okay, another Dune girly was also in attendance, Miss Florence Pugh. She also looks fantastic here. I love everything about this look. I love the Bulgari serpentine necklace, her hair and makeup executed flawlessly. I love this pearl gray color that is, it just feels like an extension of her like Dune character and like the Dune press looks. It's very like futuristic. It's um, that type of like gray white, um, like heavenly, angelic kind of like aesthetic um i love the jeweled bodice the silk skirt she's killing it in a delcor uh, spring 2024 ensemble this is from the daniel delcor ready to wear collection which was presented september of last year um so definitely one of the best looks of the night would i say that she's my favorite look no but she definitely is killing it and i have to give her give her props because like she's also been killing it during the press tour for Dune like she has been overshadowed by Zendaya but like I definitely think that she's holding her own so okay it feels like we are still in the Dune press tour guys because another Dune girly was also in attendance at the Oscars it was one of my favorite girls like she's definitely a fashion girly and I definitely like I'm here for her I don't know I feel like she'd be also fun to hang out with for some reason even though she there's there seems to be some kind of beef between her and my style icon timothy chalamet but i don't know what's up anya how's it going nice to see you i'm not okay but regardless, Anya Taylor-Joy was also in attendance at the Oscars. She is in Dior Haute Couture. She looks great. I think it's a, it feels like it's a reference to The Birth of Venus by Botticelli, and it is a modern take on the Dior Fall Winter 1949 collection. Um, the beading is gorgeously done. It took 3,500 hours of hand embroidery to make this dress. Hair and makeup also done phenomenally um not my favorite look of the night either i actually think that florence and zendaya um look better than anya here but um i still think anya looks great if you didn't know anya taylor joy's next big role is going to be in furiosa a mad max saga which is the prequel to the blockbuster mad max and the original leading lady for mad max was none other than one of my fashion queens one of my like the people that i always think bring it on the red carpet, Miss Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron and Anya Taylor-Joy are both Dior girlies. They're both Dior ambassadors. So it was fitting that Charlize obviously was gonna wear Dior. So I love everything about this look. I think Charlize always comes out, Duke swinging, guns blazing, punt serving. She's always killing it. She is in Dior Haute Couture, gray silk, 
effortlessly flowing. I love the juxtapose of the straps. As you can see, one side is a thicker strap, the other is like a thinner twisted strap. I freaking love that. And for me, the Boucheron choker and the jewels was like such a freaking unexpected twist. Like I didn't even know I needed that, but like I freaking needed that. The whole thing feels like a juxtapose, doesn't it? Like if you really look at it, it feels like a juxtapose between like masculine and feminine, um, like the straps, like the dress. Like the dress itself is like a very feminine, flowing, understated elegance from Maria Grazia, but the hair is like slick back, it's modern, it's like taking command, you know? Then you have the makeup is very feminine, it's very classic, but the jewels are like in your face and demand attention. Like no one, I haven't seen a choker on like the Oscars red carpet like ever. So like, it's like, it's a very like push and pull kind of thing. It's like slap me while you tell me you love me, choke me while you know, you're know you telling me that like we're gonna be together forever. It's like pull my hair, but tell me you're my everything. It's like, I, I love this look on her. All right, so Charlize was on stage to help present the best actress category alongside past winners, Jennifer Lawrence, Sally Field, Jessica Lange, and Michelle Yeoh. And so the winner ended up being Emma Stone for her um, performance in Poor Things. So um, this wasn't my favorite look of the night, but I will say that this is Emma Stone's, at least my favorite Emma Stone look of like award season. I think she looks stunning here. Hair and makeup look great. Um, she looks great in this like mint green dress. It's custom Louis Vuitton. It kind of reminds me of her Baptist look because it has that same feel, like that same pastel jacquard fabric. It feels like this mint green dress is kind of like in the same vein of the Louis Vuitton Resort 2024 collection, which was the inspiration of her Baptist dress. Uh, the jewelry is high in Louis Vuitton. Um, I don't know if Louis Vuitton's like necessarily happy with her right now because like she did say what she said about Louis Vuitton when she um, got the Oscar. So, oh boy, um, my dress is broken. <laughs> so I recently found out that Emma Stone was supposed to be the female lead in Babylon. But she dropped out and then Margot Robbie became the lead, which I thought was interesting. I don't think I could see like Emma Stone playing that role for some reason. Margot Robbie was also in attendance. I feel like she got snubbed for not being nominated for Best Actress for Barbie because I felt like she did such a great job there. Um, I don't feel like I could see anyone play Barbie besides Margot Robbie, even though I did do some research and I found out that they narrated it down to like four girls and it was supposed to be Anne Hathaway, Gal Gadot, and Amy Schumer, which I feel like if it was what, if Amy Schumer played Barbie, I would like not want to watch that. Like absolutely not. But I feel like I'm very happy that Margot Robbie became Barbie because I just, I can't see anyone else playing that role. But anyway, I feel like I was just like disappointed with this look because I felt like Margo, like this is the last of awards season. Like this was your chance to bring in the big guns. And like, she kind of like made me want, she left me wanting more. Does she look bad? No, absolutely not. She looks great. I just feel like she could have done better. The hair is like, feels very informal. It's giving us like San Diego, LA, like California beach wave. And like, this is the Oscars. Like I wanted her to like freaking kill it, you know? Personally already didn't like this Versace collection. Um, it's the, this dress is from the Versace Fall Winter 2024. It's the Glam Rock Punk Collection. Maybe it's just her inadvertently saying, I'm so over wearing pink, Barbie core is over, onto the next film role, so. Speaking of Barbie, Billie Eilish won her second Oscar for Best Original Song. Um, the first Oscar that she won was for James Bond. I think she looks great here. Like, I actually think she looks great here. She is in Chanel. I feel like this is her going for it. Like, I just feel like Billie marches to the beat of her own drum. I say that every single time, you know, we do a look from her and she's not gonna change who she is, but I will say that hair and makeup was executed Phenomenally. I love this like schoolgirl outfit from Chanel. I think she looks great. Like this is what we're gonna get from her. It's her, it's on brand for Billy. Okay, so when Billy went to go up and receive her award, one of her best friends 
was the one who presented her the award. So Ariana Grande. Head in the clouds, got no weight on my shoulders. I should be wiser. Realize that I've got. Was on stage giving Billy her Oscar, and Ariana Grande is in a pink custom Jean Battista Valley haute couture strapless pink dress. Shoes are Jimmy Choo, and the jewels are Tiffany and Co. But have you guys like not noticed this already? Like it seems like the Wicked press tour has already begun. It's starting early. This is Ariana's like third pink outfit. And Cynthia Erivo, who plays the Wicked Witch of the West, continues to play it up as well as she's wearing green. She was wearing custom Louis Vuitton here in the Oscars. Um, even in the Super Bowl, like they both did a promo where they were both wearing like glittery um, jerseys. Obviously Ariana was in pink and Cynthia was in green. Ariana wearing a lot of pink is not coincidental. Um, even the pink Balenciaga ribbon bow dress that she was wearing that she posted on her Instagram, it looks like she is at the back lot and she was filming already for Wicked. Like you could see the trailer in the background. Um, I love this. I hope just like Dune, we get a world press tour because I feel like Ariana could really like go for it with the looks as well as Cynthia. Cynthia looks like she's game to try anything and I love that. That's like a stylist's wet dream. Um, and then Michelle Yeoh's in there, Mother Michelle Yeoh as the gays like to call her. And like, with that being said, I'm not a huge fan of this look. I do like the dress on her, but like Ariana is not the tallest girl. So it looks like... You know, people were saying like, oh, it's too much fabric, it's drowning her. I like the dress, I think it's a moment, she's pulling it off, but what I don't like is like the hair. I My only gripe on this look is the hair. Like, I don't know, maybe she should have done a more voluminous look for her hair or like just a simple slick back pony just to give the dress a moment. So it was the hair that ruined it for me. Okay guys, so top three looks of the night. It was tough, as you can see, like the girls were girling, the looks were looking. It was tough to pick a top three, a top two, and like finally a best look of the night. They were really neck and neck, but I don't believe in a tie or a draw, so let's go. Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o came in hot tonight. The hair, the neckline, the beading, the feathers, the shade of blue that's almost this periwinkle on her like gorgeous chocolate skin. I can't even breathe. She looks absolutely stunning, okay? She's in Armani Privé looking like an utter movie star. I don't know what else to say. Shout out to Glam. Shout out to Michaela Erlinger, her stylist. She absolutely killed it. Okay. So these two, these last two looks were really neck and neck for me. Whew, it was tough. Runner up was Michelle Yeoh. Mother Michelle Yeoh, looking like a regal queen that she is. The hair slicked back. The opera gloves. The pewter and silver two-tone sequin gown with the train. I like absolutely love this look. She is in Balenciaga. She's one of their newest global ambassadors. Gemna is a storyteller. I always look at his things and think I see a lot of heritage, you know, things from the past. But then he somehow makes it his own statement as well. This particular dress, he went on eBay and bought three vintage couture dresses and made them into one couture dress. You feel a great sense of calm, but I want the dress to make a statement as well, to show that I've been empowered by this whole process. So I wanted a, a really, really wanted a dress that would help me make that statement. And when I saw this, it was, and the story behind this dress made me even think, this is why I love Demna. Like, I feel like she's just had such a renaissance of her career and like, you know, because it, it's Hollywood, you know, like everyone wants the newest, freshest, youngest thing. And female actresses don't have a long lifespan. Last year when she won Best Actress, she said something in her speech like, don't ever let anyone tell you you're past your prime. And I just like freaking love that. Like, ugh. Like I always think about that. So kudos to Michelle Yeoh, she looks amazing in Balenciaga. All right guys, last look of the night, my favorite look of the night, controversial opinion, but my best dress goes to America Ferreira. She was absolutely breathtaking. She's been so consistent throughout the whole award season. 
everyone was talking about Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie in pink, Margot Robbie, you know, doing the homages to the Barbies, Margot Robbie and Scaparelli. For Miri, it was America Ferrera who like really brought it this awards season. The bob, the jewelry, the dress, everything was perfect tonight for her. She's in this chain male pink Versace ensemble. It took the Versace team 10 tries to find the perfect pink chainmail color. It photographs like a dream. It's a perfect shade of pink. It's like this metallic liquid hugging every inch of her body, which is a beautiful body. She has this beautiful hourglass figure, by the way. She looks absolutely stunning and joyous and happy, and she's smiling, and she's just, she's killing it right now. She's absolutely killing it. It's like Donatella, like, freaking, like, dropped all this, like, metallic liquid on her, and it just, like, form-fitted on her body. She looks absolutely stunning. Not to mention her Vanity Fair after-party look. So good. We're going to do a Vanity Fair after-party looks review because, oof, the girls were out, Embrada was out, Sydney Sweeney was out, my girl Amelia was out, um, Kendall, Kylie, like, oof, we have to pay, we have to pay the girls, the dudes. That's all I have for you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Did I get it wrong? Who do you think I missed? Who do you think should have been number one? Who you think that should not have been on the list? So let me know and I will see you on the next one. Bye.